Oh, that was an incredible start for Team Heretics. I'm now joined by their coach, Neil Xenia. Now, Neil, we knew that Vu was going to be on duelist coming into this tournament, but I did not expect him to pick up that op and be so oppressive as well. So was that part of the game plan for you guys as well? How long have you had to implement that uh, aspect of your game? Yeah, so I think we had the chance to scrim uh, one map every time. So about one scrim, uh, not going to lie. So. When coming into this, like we always had issues with them coming with a visa, so we haven't really had that much time to prac, only two days. Um, so we kind of just had a discussion and, you know, we know he's really good with an op. He plays on chamber quite a lot. Um, and when it came to Joe's, he's just been begging to play, like double Joe's comps all the time. So, yeah, when it came to the op, we kind of just said, like, you know, if you want op, feel free. Like, we're used to setting up mini booth op on that map. So, you know, Patty and uh, Innes do like a really good job of setting up. So it wasn't a, a big change for us, to be honest. So we were chilling. Well, he can really do it all. Best of luck on that, too. Couldn't agree more with that one, Ian Su. Vu definitely was impressive in that duelist role, and that led Team Heretics to be able to pick up that dub. Welcome back, everyone. Goldenboy here along with Mimi and Kukuka. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I think it just goes... It's not a shocker that Heretics, you know, like found the success that they got here because honestly, they're coming into this one, you know, boots white hot right now. And you can definitely tell the DRG really trying to figure out how to how to maneuver the map in a way that benefits them and, and Team Heretics having their field day. You say it's not a surprise, but there was a big question to be answered of how well would the synergy be for Team Heretics? How, how well would how they be would able to the synergy be? Sorry. That's terrible. <laughs> it is actually terrible. I don't stand by it. That's, I'm glad, I'm glad you were seeing that stuff. I found it hilarious. You're not the arbiter of comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I am. It's yeah. me. You are. It's me. But Woot, Woot was excellent. He fit in super well. By the way, playing 4-3 in Valorant is so rare for an 18-year-old. Wait, 18 he's playing 4-3? Yes. Look for at an 18-year-old. Look at this. Look at this green. He's just cracked. He's just cracked. That is okay. the code. In other games, I feel like it actually gives you like some advantage, but I don't think it does in Valorant. I I, I guess it's just habit. Yeah, I could be. I mean, for an eighteen-year-old. That, yeah. That's yeah. Pretty yeah, that funny. Back in the day anyway, when he was four, playing on anyway, CRT. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it made a lot of sense for him uh, to be playing on the duelist, right? Some people were were asking like, what is he going to be doing, or why more so? Maybe moving back and implementing the system that they had before Woods. Um, was the way to go for this event, right? Just put Paddy Tech back into what he was playing before so you don't have to train him from zero or even have to find answers to questions that are too difficult to answer in sh in such a short time. And what is literally the perfect response to all of it really just is. because uh, the kids crisp that's, that's he's so he good is. and and also pat attack I, he has to yeah. have a lot of credit given to him he is the absolute super sub he comes back in despite <laughs> not officially sub. being a main player on this <laughs> roster he's made it to both global events of the year which is crazy and he's looked great in both of them his supportive utility yeah. is super consistently on point he did a great job of, of setting boots up and, and it was the same, the same thing that he was doing in Madrid when he was also playing in EMEA Stage 1. Like, honestly, he has the best karma in the world because, again, starting in a team as a sub and making both international events and yeah. being so nice, we love you. I'm telling you, you should play the lotto. It might work out for him. All right, well, we let's go ahead and hear what the coach of DRG has to say as we get ready for map two. I'm now joined by DRG's coach Yu Chen ahead of map two and here with Luna as well to do some translation. Now, uh, the sunset pick coming up today, I feel like every team, they prepare for it because Heretics, they love this map, they always want to pick it. So what is your plan coming into this? Uh, 在前一天看了大量的他们和其他队伍的比赛录像嘛，呃，针对他们一些战术部署做了一些针对。uh, I think for Sunset, we have watched a lot of wars yesterday the, when they faced against other teams, so we made a lot of strategy to target for that. Oh, thank you very much, Luna. I can't wait to see a coach Yu Chen. Let's see if they can bring it back. All right, so there is a very interesting thing that I think, you know, needs to be mentioned here is that for teams like DRG, FPX, EDG, this is a rare circumstance where they're here, they could chill, they go home, they vibe out and they're in their hometown and they can take that time to watch those VODs. Whereas when you heard Nilzinho earlier talking about, they did not have that time to be able to do that. So yeah, there is an opportunity here for them to catch them off guard, but you really got to stop a white hot voot, which is going to be really, really difficult to do. Yeah, exactly. And of course, I think that it's good, especially for a map like Sunset. It's 
a map where Heretics has felt super, super comfortable, but they've always been doing kind of the same thing. Uh, we're talking about how they uh, pressure at the beginning of the round, how they re-pressure, especially in the mid round. Like, it, it, finding the key points in the map, they're never going to be stale and defensive from the defense. Now, the question is, is what going to be the same? Is he going to feel as, I mean, he is going to feel as comfortable, but are that they going to change the plan coming on to? Yeah. Uh. I, I think Neon is a harder role to slot into, one for one. Oh, you'll see. Uh, but they're, and they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. He picked the race instead, which I think makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I think that is the, the <laughs> in my opinion, the mechanically hardest agent to play in the game, even for players who have done it before. Whereas Woot, the raise, I think it's a lot simpler to slot into that role for him. Honestly, I think that at, at this point, they just ask him, like, hey, what do you want to do here? Do you do you want to go for, for a raise? Do you want to go for Neon? Do what my do eyes deceive me? That's a gecko. That's a gecko on Dragon Ranger Game, and they're oh playing the gecko. So we've got <laughs> some time to be alive, on both kids. sides, too. DRG <laughs> coming out and I, I think surprising by, I by locking that one in. They have not been playing that agent whatsoever. This will be the first time they're playing Gecko. They're getting with the times on a sunset comp that is great. I'm excited to see what they've prepped up. And I also love that picture on that dude's iPad. Anyway, let's go ahead and send it over to your casters and see how this is all going to play out. Yeah, I don't know where they got that picture of GB. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think there are a couple of things to talk about in these two comps. Number one, the Gecko is a big deal. They haven't been running Gecko at all, but yeah. Dre, I think there's a lot to be discussed on the other side too, of going for the Raze instead of the Neon. Yes, it's a very different agent. Just, uh, many would argue, like Mimi was saying, that Raze is easier to play than Neon from a mechanical perspective, but the timings are entirely different. Yeah, yeah, so for the team, I'm, I'm sure Heretics is gonna be fine, but the thing I really wanna focus on with changing of the comp of the Neon to the Rays is DRG said that they were, they were prepping against, you know, Heretics and yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Film but they're that. watching Neon. They're not ready for a raise. I mean, raise is more standard and you might have a better idea of what a raise will do. But still, if you're prepping for a Neon, it's completely different. So maybe all that prep will go out the window, potentially. Yeah. You see that flash over the top from Nick, allowing Luke to take an aggressive angle. They grab the orb here and the Roomba will inevitably cue the fight that ensues. A one-for-one one traded, a little space gained. Yeah, but one-for-ones always tend to favor the attacking side, and it just opens up the map again. And that's why you see Benji and Boo just prodding into that B site. Oh my gosh, Patatik Spike down hasn't a. skipped a beat. Nice trades in that elbow area of the A site, and now Heretics just want to regroup and play the discipline game that they have been playing all series long. Yeah, they're ripe for reset here. I think the interesting thing, though, is they are almost... The, yeah, this is where it gets really messy. They almost had too many options to begin with. They had spread themselves and found successes on both sides of the map. And so now the question is, where do you go? They decide to rotate back A, narrowly avoiding disaster from TZH having a timing mid. I mean, Heretics are rotating so well right now. A lot of spam da damage done onto them, though. Bukashu and TCH with so much left to do. The spike planted onto the site. Numbers the way of the attack. Yeah. Benji Fishy and Rian's both weak though. And Bukashu creeping forward by himself. So much to clear. The time is just ticking away. The smoke can prove to be kind of fruitful. Massive first kill from Bukashu. A 2v2 Rians, remember, still weak, 49 HP. Oh, that's a big kill, though, out from Boo. He gets both to get Heretics the pistol. And Heretics in that post plant just opting to double up on the flank, wrapping around, and Boo just, honestly, just playing Duck Hunt in the back there. And yeah, it was scrappy, but, I mean, he closed it out. Nice trading done from Heretics. That was the name of this round. It was just trading back and forth from the start. Shion7 there, getting a little too over eager in the beginning with that Gecko Flash running through, throwing it straight at them. Maybe he needs to throw it up yeah. in the air next time, yeah. I like the idea. I like that they wanted to take the fight, but it just doesn't really go their way. A Spectre and two rifles for the side of the attack. And a cam mid, too, just to make sure there's no silly business. No antics that DRG are up to and pushing up mid. Look at all this utility for the hit. Not trying to get cheesed at all is Heretics. 
I must wait a moment. And that's what goes back to that discipline that we were seeing on Icebox. Oh, yeah. Bukashu potentially overwhelmed as Nick falls. He's able to get one, Bukashu is, but ultimately meets his teammate's demise. I mean, the spacing from Heretics is so on point right now. It feels like even if DRG get the instant headshot, it's traded right away. I mean, look, even if Boo had gone down there, it's going to get traded right away. They just don't really have the guns to fight back there. But you're right, the spacing of the trading has been really nice from Heretics. And Heretics didn't need to really cook anything up there that's too special. Uh, Boo, on that B side, on the A side of the map, understood that DRG took all that space, grabbed the orb, saw who DRG grabbed the orb on as well. So they just know that the Rays and the Gecko are not towards that B side of the map, and they could just bully it with the, the dart back site, all the utility. And you're going to see another B side default here. And why not? You're going up against a Cypher, you're running a Sova, you can break all that utility. And if you break it early, it opens up the possibilities for a late hit, you know, especially if you go back and faint A. They've been running the same idea at the beginning of the round A from DRG every single time. Yeah. And Boo's ahead of it here. They throw, again, they throw the flash over the top from Nick, and then Luke uh, and Xion7 take the space to grab the orb to control the side uh -huh. of the map. That was almost messy. And look at this aggressive trip for Benji Fishy in B main. It allows his team to go back and take map control elsewhere. They're gonna re-clear this A side on Luke. He's in a world of hurt right now. Yeah, and here comes the drone. He could get punished. It's a good nade though. Yeah, but is it gonna be enough to keep himself alive? No, just buy some time. He, he went for the re-swing there. I can't help but feel like that was a blunder. And now, Xion7 is forced to try to get a trade, but Heretics taking his HP down low. You've also got Benji Fishy, who's going to be controlling the middle of the map late into the round to attempt to cut off the rotations. Paranoia comes out from elbow. Benji Fishy falls, but they're going to get the sight and they're going to get the spike down to 4v2 for the rest of the round. Nick and TZH with so much to do. Plenty of time to do it, though, but they have to play their cards just right. What no room for trouble. error. Paranoia creating some space. But if they're going to strike, they kind of have to do so soon. TZH getting the best three ends. Gets them a little bit closer to equal footing. The problem is, is Nick is so far away. Oh, that's a nice opening, though. TZH going to do it on his own, is he? Time's running low. It's all up to Pat Attack. He has one flash. He's been good for the team so far. But TZH, it was a, he was a monster. Does he but have it's it? not going to be enough. Oh. He did so much to get them there. But it was not enough. Oh my gosh, it's heartbreaking for TCH. He completely dominated in that round. But the time was just too low. John wicked his way through that entire retake by himself. <laughs> Such nice shots. I have to point out on the entry, Woot. I mean, he was full blinded by the Gecko Flash. And he still got the kill back sight. That's crazy. A new look here for Heretics. All that conditioning on the B side of the map, that KO dagger, it's been the same for every single round so far, but this right. time they're all geared up at A already. Another nade to thwart Rian's off of the drone. But Luke has to give this space. I mean, he's, he's sticking around for far too long. He's got 20 HP, has to satchel out. Oh, another entry. What a nade. I mean, this is, again, borderline perfect. They're just so precise and so exact. Oh, on nice how they're shot. taking these sites. It's a great shot out from Nick, but how much more can they do? Nick gets another. The swing out from Patty overwhelms him. And once again, it's numbers the way of the attack. They'd want to scale up and take this fight, which is dangerous. Remember, TZH had a massive round previously. Only one with the rifle. He isolated the site. Yeah, but they've got a brutal crossfire. He has to get All the, the one as best as he can, and he's going to get it. Can he pull it off this time? Yes, he can. He woke up. Oh, he's been awake. He was awake in the previous round. He's trying to bring it back for his team. Showing yet. his team that they can do it. 
It's possible. Single-handedly. Look at him almost dragging his team to the previous to a round win in the previous round and managing to do so this time. Such a quick reaction from TZH after he gets that first kill in that screen area. He puts the smoke down to isolate either fight that he wants to take. Yeah. This time he opts to go for Benji Fishy. Oh, look at the crowd. Hype for him. Uh, they've been given a reason to be excited. They haven't had much of that. Oh. Luke in a different spot with an op in hand. Remember, he's been playing A. Oh, what a dart. And there goes the op. And the KO flash to follow up. They don't have to the site. They don't have to deal with the Cypher setup. Bukashi set up on the other side. Oh, but Nick. Massive from Nick. There's reason to believe now. They seem dead on arrival, but DRG showing signs of life. Wow. And that spacing earlier that I was praising Heretics for, and the trading, it's just kind of been lacking in these last couple of rounds. Not enough to press the panic button, for sure. But look at this, this is all 1v1s from start to finish there. And it was such a good start to the round. The utility was great. They got rid of the op. Yeah. They managed to avoid the Cypher utility, right? It was a great start. Even the KO flash was perfect. But the showstopper from Wu just didn't connect, and that'll ultimately force Heretics to be on, honestly, maybe the first eco I've seen them be on in this series, which is crazy to say. Yeah, we haven't seen them in this position. It's also a different approach from DRG. I mean, yeah, they've got Luke who's hopping B again, but a little bit more invested mid. And lo and behold, it's Benji Fish who's here. Tap of the door to try to strike as it goes down, but no target given. He's going to fill in on the space behind it, though. Did he hear that cam? Yeah, I think he has a good idea that the cam is there, and they showed on purpose. Okay, they they showed, they got seen by the cam on purpose because Benji called it out for them. So that's why they're going back to B now. They're assuming that DRG is going to rotate towards the A side of the map, but they're missing their window of opportunity like that icebox round. But what was that? Another clean flick out from Patty. Paranoia is traded, and that Cypher is going to get so much info. They've got to overwhelm, and they've managed to do so. Nick, again, an opportunity to be hero, but Wu drops him. If they're able to pull this off, all of the momentum that they had very well could be gone. Xion with so much to do, a 1v3, but it's just an op in the hands of the duelist. Last player standing. Will the Sheriffs fall to a whimper at the feet of Xion7? No. A MasterCard thrifty for Heretics. And the desk was talking about how Woot, or the coach was talking about how Woot has been known for his chamber, and he, he quite did so, but it's, he's on raise, Doug. Look at this. That's not a headhunter, that's a sheriff. He's playing chamber on raise right now. <laughs> There's the handshake. <laughs> so cool. Back up two for Heretics. A shoddy buy for DRG. And a new look. A mid default this time, but Boo still doing this A side default, giving presence there. Dagger will connect onto B main, not on anybody. That'll cause Benji Fishy to have to re-clear B main. They just got out right here. a flash from Nick and a paranoia from TZH mid. And heretics are still holding on to the space. There. Yeah, they're just waiting for Benji Fishy to get contact here, maybe get a pick. He breaks the cam. And it's so rare to see a Cypher offing, so I don't think DRG will be ready for this. He's not gonna be given a target. But Doug, if heretics go back to A, like I'm like I see that they're doing right now they might have an opportunity. They know that Luke has been playing very aggressive here. He has an ult, but again, there's no contact. Oh, he oh, commits? He surrounded. He gets oh. his one, but I know exactly where. the ult was canceled. They're still gonna find space A. 
30 seconds that left. paranoia out and boo fills the space getting further and further as a spike ultimately will get sunk into the soil of the site Crash traded out. Ops still in the hands of Benji Fishy. Wood finding space, finding a kill on a TZH. And now the nade to dissuade. One enemy remains. Oh. It's just too clean. <laughs> it, it's just too clean. Oh my goodness. And, and uh, unfortunately, yeah. it feels a lot like Icebox, where it's the heroics that are getting DRG one, two rounds here or there. But when it just gets to simple, like Valorant, where you're just playing good against good and macro is how things are decided. Heretics are just rolling DRG. Yeah, and Woot once more is having such a performance. He's sitting at 12 kills right now. He didn't connect with the Headhunter last time, but this time he does, and that nice little cheeky one-tap on a Nick. That was beautiful. And for the side of DRG, I mean, they had man advantage into this round, but she on seven, he kind of jumped the gun a little early there with that thrash. It didn't get immense value. It didn't get as much value as it could have gotten. It gets broken right away instead, and. That was the win condition for that retake. Yeah, you're up numbers, but still, you have to be disciplined in those moments and play as a unit and go together. It doesn't always have to be heroics, especially when it comes to utility. You can't just send a thrash in alone and expect to win the round. There was no follow-up at all. And maybe that's a conversation that they're having right now as DRG called their first time out of the map and attempt to slow things down and collect themselves. And I kind of want to see DRG, like, press the matter more at A. Try to challenge Boo in the 1v1. Yeah, it, it can be, you know, intimidating when a team is just headshotting you like this, but you got to do something. You can't just keep playing a passive line and falling back. Heretics know that you're playing that way. So maybe send a lot of players there. Don't use a lot of utility in the early round to act like it's a Cypher setup, potentially. Sure. And then you might be able to catch a player off guard, at least get the trade. But when they invest this much utility into the round, I mean, Heretics just, they just form a game plan of how DRG is playing the map. I, I will say that's a slight adjustment though, what DRG just did there. Remember, it's been flashes over the top. Both utility that yeah. they used there was refreshable. Yeah. So they're gonna get the Dizzy back, they're gonna get the knife back. Minor adjustment, but an adjustment still. I think Luke. He's got it. Who's been up here? He's been up here so many rounds, he drops it just the right time. I mean, Oh, dude, he what? just Houdini'd his way out what? of that situation. How did he know? He just, the intuition is on point for Boo right now. He's a knower. You're going to push back B. No trips up here. All he has is the cam. The knife will tag. The ult will pop. And the hit will come. The oh. paranoia out to be the first, but Nick and Bukashi hold the line. This is why the kid buys a Vandal. What a hole! Yeah. And it's it's kind of what I said. Luke took that aggressive line, and yeah, he didn't get the timing on Boo, but it gave his team all the info that that was going to be a B hit. And that's why they had three players there geared towards that hit. And then just crossfires on the actual site. Beautiful. And that dagger as well from Nick, that timing was perfect. Heretics again towards that B side of the map, jumping the gun too early. They're up mad advantage. You got half your team got hit by a dagger. Just slow the round down. We don't need to commit KO alt right there. Oh, they're back to their old ways. The aggression a little bit too much. Luke has so much to find. And DRG slammed the door on the round once more. The spike is well out of reach. Rians is going to have to pull up a ridiculous play to win this one back, and he can't. A nice first engagement from Luke onto Woot there. I mean, he was in his lap. Yeah. He satcheled right into him. And when you satchel him like that, sometimes the bullets just don't connect. There's nothing you can do about it. And the crowd is finally alive, giving energy to DRG as well. And this rocket, the timing on it was perfect. This was a great A fight. This is, I mean, and that's a setup that they've been doing. It finally comes to fruition, and when it comes together, it looks great. Yeah. They're going to do it again. Oh. This time Luke playing on the other side, satcheling away. But the paranoia will buy some time. Rian's the only one with rifle. Really good damage done, though. Honestly, for both teams. 
But we've seen Heretics already get that thrifty round previously. TZH will have somebody to say about that as well. He can hear all this, all these footsteps, all this jumping around. And when this hit comes in, he should have a clear view over the top of the smoke since he's playing on top of that market box. Oh, Beautiful. Triple catch the first. There's the sideline over the smoke that you mentioned, but he decides to push into it. Perhaps ill-advised. Over eager. Still has a rifle. Rian does well. He had it. Falls at the feet of Akashu. The kid is teeing off now. Boo was nothing but a sheriff and position given away. If the cam wasn't enough, the ult will say it all. <laughs> and the double swing to close out the round. Nice from DRG. Making the map competitive, giving themselves a chance to potentially close this one out. In a nice setup here. Mukashu has found so much success from that corner. Yeah. And he gets that first kill at been back to back rounds now. And now it's gonna be on Heretics to call a timeout, slow things down and see what the adjustments have to be because for the majority of this half, it has felt like effortless Valorant. But something happened on the other side of that timeout from DRG that has changed things. And I think it's a I think it's two things that have gone on here. I think number one, DRG have made minor adjustments, but it also feels like heretics are changing the way they've approached these last couple of rounds. You think about that heavy double satchel into elbow. You think about the way that they were hitting too early onto the hit B a couple of rounds ago. The approach has been different. Yeah, exactly. They're jumping the gun a little bit too early on these hits. They need to just stick to using the utility, methodically clearing out everything and going for the trading, making sure the spacing is there, everything of that sort. And maybe putting a little bit more emphasis on the middle area of the map. I feel like they should have an idea that DRG is playing three players towards that A side most of the rounds. So maybe try to take a timing up mid early on to punish maybe the rotate when it comes back fully. Maybe get a pinch on to A. But so far towards this B side of the map, unless it was the eco rounds for DRG, I feel like Heretics hasn't had success as much on the actual gun rounds of DRG. Three rounds in a row from the defensive side to keep it competitive to tie us at five. And this is that similar approach that we saw in the beginning of the game. Yep. They're going back to what worked. That shock's not going to catch the first trip. <laughs> but we'll catch the other two with one. Nice. That's why Heretics runs the Sova on this map. They don't deposit Benji Fishy here at the B side this time, but they've done so so many other rounds before that they're allowed to do something like this and just group up A. Dude, Luke is so far up. Yeah, this is good from him though. He can get first contact and get out potentially with this satchel. He's got one. But this is the one way he works against him. I know exactly. And now Heretics are gonna be able to head towards A with, with pace. Yeah, Wu does one HP, but there's nobody on the site to fight back. She on seven. He should fall back here and just use his thrash. He's sticking around for way too long, almost getting punished by Benji. Still has plenty of utility to play around. Has the Dizzy as well, and that's the first thing that goes up. She on seven on the swing with thrash will not be used. Numbers the way of the attack. Root somehow still alive with his one HP. Now the spike planted. You see the cam coming out, seeing if they can find any. Woo playing his time and striking when the moment is right. Finally falling. Shutting them down. But DRG with a limited amount of Once options. The They're going to have to frag their way through this, and that's a big hope from TZH. But Patty Tech and Rian save the round for Heretics. Last round before the switch. And Xion7 again getting dropped with that thrash. Not getting value. Had they had it on the retake once more, I'm telling you, it would have been so fruitful for them. I mean, TZH on these retakes and Nick on the retakes together have done so much for DRG. They just need that little extra piece to close out the rounds. And that could be that utility or it could even just be a body. And I get it, he's trying to even out the numbers, you know? Try to get it even before they go for the retake, but sometimes you can win a 4v5. Last round of the half, the Roomba already getting value. It popped in the face of Luke. He's down to 70 HP. Nice. 
Remember, Nick still has his ult. He's rotated back B. And of course, heretics are rotating away. Yeah. I dropped and spike. Luke did show towards the B side of the map. So I think heretics are reading into this thinking that, okay, this might be a B stack then potentially. And even if it wasn't, there was enough noise made to draw rotations over. Yeah. And this time the drone will get value because that nade is not there. So they can actually push back DRG from elbow from that lane area. TZH wasn't spotted. The drone didn't go deep enough. And now he's taking a progressive angle. It's off angle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Wood has been so clean. And now with the ult online, Bukashu tried finding a window. And yeah, he got his one, but the spacing is back. He's able to trade back. Oh. Nick can't even use his ult. And a 2v4 attempted a retake. And a trip, too, for the post plant. Funneling them back in from spawn. A flash in their face, the second soaring through. Everything to delay. Luke has no choice but to just waltz his way forward. Try to face the music. One enemy Walk remaining. into the crossfire. Walk into the gunfire. A 1v3, but the onus is on him. He can't sit back and wait for the fight to come to him. He's got to go. A little bit of leg shown from Benji. And a kill found. But time will expire as the kills come through a 7-5 half. The way of heretics. It feels like a lot of opportunities left on the table there. Yeah, and yeah, it may have slipped away a little bit for heretics, but for the side of DRG, I feel like they actually are warming up and getting more comfortable on the stage. Players are stepping up and hitting some really nice shots. I mean, the chemistry from Nick and TZH on that half was awesome. The retakes that they had was great. I mean, a way better showing than the last map. We'll see what the desk thinks about that first half. 7-5, the way of heretics. What do you guys think? Honestly, I couldn't agree more. It does feel like DRG is finding themselves a, a little bit of a second wind here, which they're certainly going to need. Otherwise, it could have been a very quick 2-0 in favor of Heretics. But we'll see what happens in the half. Yeah, I think we saw DRG actually winning a few rounds there, not just off the hero place that we're seeing in the first map of this series. Team Heretics is actually getting shut down on some of those sight hits over towards B. We're yep. calling back into these late round hits, and I think DRG had great synergy to stall them out. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to show a, a little bit of uh, a round because it, it, exactly what you're saying, right? We saw some adaptation. We heard their coach talking about how, how they read onto things. Uh, Benji Fishy got the up here. This is something that he also did in EMEA, even from the attack, just to get that first kill. But the read from DRG is, is correct. Even though look in this position has been, you know, a bit hit or miss, uh, the read is correct. And the way that they delay and gather the information onto uh, what's happening next, the moment that they know that Benji Fishy has pushed onto me, they know that he's alone. They yeah. know for a fact that he is the one creating that kind of pressure, especially if he's with the operator. And then the kills just fall through from the from the positions that they were able to defend this site time and time again. So yeah, the preparation is there. Now, is it going to be enough when they swap us sites? Yeah. It's going to be tough, but something they do have behind them is this crowd. They are really yeah. coming alive for this CRG squad. I think we've seen a lot of people show out already to Master Shanghai, especially to support these Chinese squads. And I mean, you, you've got to talk about it, right? I'm not a huge believer in like the crowd debuff of having a crowd against you being a big negative, but I do think the crowd buff is real. Getting to have that, that motivation, that extra energy around you, and also getting to play at home can really add to the comfort. But with Heretics up seven to five, this will be a very tough one, and Heretics in a good position to close out. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and swap these sides, see what DRG's game plan is. Can they force this map three? We're gonna send it back over to Doug and Baby Bay. Thank you so much, GB. Yeah, I think the crowd may help. I think it may take a whole lot more than just that, though. It's been a competitive scoreline to close out that first half, but it really feels like Heretics were in control of the vast majority of it. Up to here on defense now. DRG choosing to explore the middle of the map. With a lot of presence, too. Three, four of them here. And an interesting buy from Luke to invest into a Sheriff. Normally we see a lot of raises on that attacking side, you know, try to go for satchels to close the gap. Especially when you're entering into sight. Right. Or at least, you know, a ghost in a Roomba to clear out some corners. Just very confident in his aim right now, but it's going to be hard. He's going to have to invest a nade in order to break this trip, unless he goes for a wall bang on it. But he might get punished if he's he tries to shoot it right now. I mean, he's got help. Surely someone's holding him while he tries to clear it. The nades go out. 
So does the utility. Nick's the first to fall. There's the value coming out from the Sheriff. It gets a little messy at the end there. He will fall. What a hold. I hate visiting underground doors. Just, just when it looked like they had space. That nade from Woot just isolated everybody from the site and the main. So it just, the fights were just not in the favor of DRG. And yeah, Luke did a really good job getting a couple kills with that Sheriff, but it's just too much to ask. Especially with how Heretics played that scenario. I mean, they fought together. This Heretics roster just looks so good right now, man. Yeah. They're playing such clean Valorant. DRG with backs against the ropes here. Still a sheriff in the hands of Luke. He mentioned that he found a little bit of success in the previous round. He got his one. As on 7 gets his a little bit closer to having his ult online. Yeah, the problem with buying a sheriff in this round, though, yeah. is that there's an outlaw on the other side from Rians. So when it comes to the gun round, I mean, that's a one-shot kill. They just sent Wingman on a solo mission. Look at all the utility from Heretics. I Shock mean, darts, mollies, nades. And spam. I, I know it's, it's just And this guy. Yeah, and then their food. <laughs> Go get him, little guy. Little guy won't get value this time around. I mean, the spike is still sitting back on the site. The two remaining members of DRG are still playing back main. So far in this series, Heretics hasn't had to really worry about lurks at all. No. That's why you see them over rotating and stacking sites anywhere that the pack of DRG shows. That's a really good point. All the way back to Icebox. Yep. They don't. They have no reason not to stack the sites yeah. that DRG is showing early on. They haven't been given a reason to. And going into this round, look at the armor from DRG and look at the guns from Heretics. We have an outlaw in play right now. That's a one-shot kill to the body, and you have two of those. I mean, he could post up on any angle, and if they walk into his crosshair, it's basically a free win to the round. Heretics are setting themselves up to win this bonus. And that inevitably would be the final nail in the coffin. Again, mid-presence from oh. the attack. And elbow And he spotted, yep. There was that swing. Looking for the cam. Almost, almost pays for it with his life. Also, there's got to be somebody holding Benji Fishy here. They're going to get crunched in. The paranoia is so good. They just get rolled. The bonus seems inevitable now. Unless TZH can do something special with the no. classic in his face, he will fall. He got dunked on. Nick with a 1v3. To try to win the round, to try to avoid the financial deficit that is likely crippling. There's a drone expecting the swing up from mid, but he's looking the wrong way. Finally spots Boo, and it's a foot race. Boo will get back A. And Nick decides to re-explore mid. The door shut in his face. Options limited. 30 seconds left. And they know. They've gotten it cornered. Oh. Woods just waiting on the other side. That also, you know, we talked about this a little bit on Icebox, and yeah, maybe they've kind of moved away from it, but that felt like discipline as well. Not forcing, not giving them as ones, anything like that. You know, we're really cautious of how they played it out. There was an early rotate A. There was a dart to confirm that he was mid. And then as soon as he know, they're not gonna, he has no other where to go yeah. except market. Who was there waiting for him? So well played. And I mean, that whole round was so, so well played from Heretics. They saw the KO dagger land in B main. They understood nobody pressured A. Where else is DRG gonna be? They're either in mid or in B main. And that's why you see the reclear utility come out in mid. And then that's all she wrote at that point. I mean, very similar to the, to the last round. You're gonna see Heretics probably already start cheating over to this mid side of the map, leaving Boo here as an anchor, just living, trying to spot info here. They're just nice so comfortable flash. giving up this space. That was a nice flash, you're right. They're just so comfortable giving up this space. But this time the Paranoid did not connect. Spike However, Benji Fishy and Woot oh. still do. This kid. Oh, this oh, kid! Oh my goodness. 
Wood is just on one. I mean, we got to get a one-tap counter at this point, because this kid has done, like, seven of them in this, in this game. They just make it look so easy. Four on the round, the handshake is back. It really is just another level for this Heretics roster. <laughs> it's, it's the third, it's the third so kill. Clean, this one was the most impressive. A little ADS flick. He's so mechanically gifted. That's why he's a part of this roster. I mean, they were just waiting for him to become of age to dominate. And that he is. And you know what's crazy? This is EMEA's second seed. Well, people say their number one seed lost last night. So, yeah. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, this Heretic squad just looks, they, they look really freaking good, man. Really, really good. The honeymoon period that you mentioned earlier where they're just like, they're rotating rosters. Right? It's a perpetual honeymoon period. It seems like they're in it. They just seem like they can do no wrong here. Right now, I think DRG needed to have a little bit more of a spread default. Maybe pressure that A side of the map a little bit, not just leave it completely open because so far, Boo, he really hasn't had to worry about it at all. The only time that DRG shows somewhere is when they're actually committing to the area of the map, committing to the site. There's no need to, to even worry about that A side of the yeah. map at all. There's no conditioning, there's no misdirection out from the attack. DRG needs to try to push them off of these aggro lanes that they're getting. Yeah. Push them off of the mains and then maybe go back towards so mid. But again, no one's gonna pressure this A side of the map and it's gonna allow Heretics to just have so much info on the round. Here. I mean, look, he's not even looking to see if they're even gonna run through the one way Here. at this point. I mean, he doesn't even care because he knows they're not gonna do it. To be fair, Woot is posted up there with a showstopper. Trip is cleared. And they rotate back. Or at least take a step back. The concerning thing here is the only thing they have to control other areas of the map is the cam. And that's that's like their safety valve right now. Yes. The only thing that makes them feel like they can head back. And Doug, if their intention is to bait out that utility and think that they're going B, you don't need all five players in the main there. You can have a more spread de default. I mean, Wu could have been all the way pushed up on this flank already. We had to some of the pressure. Shock dart to dissuade. They're, they're trapped in mid. As they have been the last couple of rounds. Paranoia from a little bit further back. 30 seconds left. Not going to connect, and they're going to have to go back in A, and guess what? There's it's Woot, and it's Woot with the showstopper. But the difference from how he plays this to Luke, he takes a step back, he rotates away. Time. There's not much. There's no time. The showstopper's going to get value like crazy. Woot holds the line. They can't win. There's going to be no time. They're all here. Please. The spam, the knife. They can't do anything. And this, this is, this is <laughs> yeah, go on. This is what happens when you just five man group up and you don't have a spread default on the map. You don't give yourself the, the time to rotate all the way around. You have to clear too many things because you don't have the info on the opposite side of the map. The truth is a lot of the problems that we saw on the, ice, the attack side of Icebox from DRG are showing their, their ugly heads again. Yeah. It's the same, it's the same issues. Oh, uh, I can't aim anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. Yeah. Benji can't aim anymore, apparently. No, or maybe nobody. he just doesn't need to. <laughs> that, that might be more accurate. Oh, Woot. Hey, Woot's doing plenty of aiming for the rest of the team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, monster on the loose. Thrash will be invested, but not a lot of utility to follow up or she on body seven, to follow up. She on seven tag two, but it's not going to matter. That's a big molly up from Nick, though. Bukashu and Nick, with spike in hand, have managed to find safe crossing. But again, they're just enclosed onto the site. Yeah. If they peek this left side, they're going to get rolled. At least they have the spike here. Well, at least they have the spike here.
That might have been the only real silver lining that they had there. Heretics from beginning to end, from A to Z, dismantle and destroy DRG. A very clinical showing. And, I mean, for a team that didn't have a lot of time to prep, to practice going into this. One scrim. Yeah. This is a good match to have, to build confidence going into the further matches. And for DRG, I think they need to go back to the drawing board and really focus on their attack halves. That defensive side wasn't that bad. There was a lot of promising things that I saw. They just need to be more disciplined on those retakes. They had so many chances to win those had they had just done it together and not relied on just TZH and Nick. Perhaps a lot of nerves, you know, first international playing against these teams and etc. But Heretics looking so good and really not having to show their whole hand early on in this no. tournament. No, not at all. I mean, Woot, I think in the series, had 17 first bloods. He had seven on the previous map and 10 on this map. I, he's, he's a freak, man. Can you believe he's a flex player? No, there's just no way. There's just no way. And who's supporting him? Pad attack. Beautiful flashes. Great mechanical talent for himself as well. Yeah, I, I think the big takeaway here is Heretics look really good. Yeah, they had one scrim. I don't think it really mattered. Yeah. They didn't have to show very much at all. I think they were very decisive. Their spacing was really nice. Their trading was on point. They did all of the little things well. And the truth is, they did the big things well as well. They executed from top to bottom. Yeah. And they just kind of ran circles around DRG. And they let it slip away a little bit on that attacking side, but what I liked was that they honed it back and closed out that half. Yeah. That's what was so impressive to me, because it's so easy when you're rolling a team to just like play really loose and yeah. all of a sudden a comeback yeah, happens. Sure. But if you do that to the wrong teams, it could be a very bad thing. Oh, so I'm sure. glad they, punished. yeah, I'm glad the timeout oh. happened and they brought it back. The Verizon post-match interview on the stage right now with Ben J. Fishy. 来到赛后采访，我是维嘉，让我们再次恭喜 Team Heretics 赢下了本场比赛的胜利。我们是请到了 Benji Fishy 来接受我们的采访。那首先可能想问一下 Benji， 来到了上海大师赛，也拿下了属于他们的首胜，现在是什么样的心情和感受呢 ？So welcome to the post-match interview, and I'm now joined by Benji Fishy from Team Heretics with us. Huge congratulations on this win. So how do you feel to pick up your first win of Master Shanghai? Oh uh, yeah, it feels amazing, you know, I think, I mean, for me, it's my first ever international win, you know, we, we went 0-2 in Madrid, so, yeah, no, it feels really good, especially with the conditions we've been under, um, to come out and play like this, you know, with everything, it feels great. 他说：“感觉非常的惊喜，非常的开心，因为这对于他来说是他第一次在国际赛事上获得比赛的胜利。可能之前在马德里的时候确实没能有机会获得比比赛的胜利，当时确实是一个非常可惜的情况。但是现在他们努力了，成功了，然后也拿下了他们国际赛的首胜，非常的开心。那接下来想问一下他，因为其实这一阵对于 Team Heretics 来说，可能确实经历了很多东西，他们经历了人员的轮换，同时可能因为一些原因，很多选手没有及时来到上海，所以他们的。”准备时间就像 Benji 之前说过是非常非常短的，所以说在现在他们感觉 Patetic 回来之后，他们的准备是怎么样的？他们的团队默契现在是什么样的呢 ？So so many things happen these days, and roster change and some other problems. You mentioned you don't have enough time to do the preparations,、mm -hmm. but today you just seem unbeatable. So how's your preparation and how's your team synergy after Patetic come back? Uh, I mean, we've had basically we've had one full day to practice, you know, with this new roster.、Um, we, as us as a team, we haven't scrimmed or played a game together since before or since the grand finals against Fnatic and EMEA.、Um, so it was mainly due to like us having a break after grand finals and then having some visa problems while getting to Shanghai.、Um, so then, yeah, like. Past two days、uh, before this game, we were able to practice, but we basically just had one full day of practice with Patty and Wu on Duelist. So it's been it's been a little bit hard, but I think we're you know slowly getting the hang of it.、And、I think the more games we play, the the better it's going to be for us. 
。他说，其实确实对于他们来说，准备时间是非常短的，可能只有一到四天这个样子。然后当时他们这一套阵容，可能在 p a t h e t i c 加入之前，他们在和 f a n a t i c 当时的决赛之前有练习过一阵子。但是在 p a t h e t i c 加入之后，可能确实只有短短几天的时间让他们去练习。同时，当时可能因为一些签证的问题，一些选手没有能够及时来到上海，所以可能说在今天的比赛之前，他们对于准备时间来说，可能只有差不多两天的时间。但是对于他们来说，可能他们也确实克服了很多问题，然后也赢下了今天这场比赛的胜利，确实做得非常的漂亮。那最后其实来到上海也有几天了嘛，也想问一下 Benji Fish 选手，觉得上海的生活怎么样？喜不喜欢这里的生活的 ？So it's been a few days since you arrived in Shanghai. Do you enjoy the life here? Oh, I love Shanghai. It's literally my probably the favorite city I've been to.、Um, You know, I the place is amazing. It's so pretty. The food is amazing. Like literally, there's nothing for me to complain about. It's yeah, it's it's unreal. Seriously,、uh, like the first night we got here, we went out with all the lights. Oh, it's very, it's so cool. So so cool. I love it. Okay. <laughs> 甘吉说，他非常非常喜欢上海，这可能是他来过他最喜欢的城市，而且感觉来到上海之后，每一天都很开心。他们喜欢这里的生活，喜欢这里的人，然后也非常享受在这打比赛的每一天。对于他来说，对于这个城市，可能他真的觉得没有任何可以抱怨的地方，只有非常非常喜欢享受来到上海的每一天。So do you have also have some words for the Shanghai fans? Some words?、Uh, do you have words for the fans in this arena?、Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate、uh, all the support for me and my team.、Um, I'm sorry we eliminated, or not eliminated. Sorry we beat a Chinese team. I apologize, but thank you guys for supporting, and I hope to, you know, get some more wins. Thank you. 他说他非常开心，大家可以支持他们。虽然说今天可能和 C N 的队伍对战，赢下了 C N 的队伍，他感到有一些抱歉，但是他会尽力赢下每一场比赛，尽力赢下之后的比赛。也感谢大家一直来的支持，谢谢大家。那我们的赛后采访到这里今天结束了，接下来还有非常非常重要的抽签仪式在等着大家，不要走开。So that's all for our interview, and let's draw to the draw show. That's right. Draw show, Benji. You have nothing to be sorry for because no team has been eliminated so far. But we will find out over the next couple of days who is going to survive and go to playoffs and who will be eliminated on this stage. Now, to find out which teams will be going up against each other, we're going to do a draw. And I am now joined by Victoria,、uh, who's going to explain the rules and how we're going to find those matchups. Yeah. So、um, through the first two days of competition, we've had teams that have won, and so they're. They're going to be the one and zero teams, and then we're going to have the teams that lost their first match. They are the zero and one teams.、Um, teams from the same pool are going to be drawn to match each other.、Um, so the team that is going to be drawn first into each match is the higher seed.、Um, regional matchups are fair game, but that doesn't matter here. So I think we're all set. Oh, I can't wait to get into it.、Uh, but just before that, let me explain to everybody here、uh, what is happening. 大家好，第一轮的比赛已经结束了。我们现在用抽签的方法看一看下一轮这八个队他们的对手会是谁。我们先从呃四个一比零的组开始，好吧 ？Right, let's go. All right, let's get started. Oh. Okay,、uh, this is going to be the first seed coming up for that first one-zero matchup, and it will be G2. Now, as Victoria explained just here, the next team she's pulling out will be the opponent G2 will face, and everybody here wants Fun Plus Phoenix. Will we get it though? However, oh, it's Team Heretics. All right, all right. So Team Heretics will be facing G2 first. G2 will be the higher seed. Next, we're going to be determine who is going to be the first seed for the next match up, and it will be FPX. Okay, they're going to be the first seed、uh, coming into this, which means the only team that's still left to be drawn, Victoria, if you would do the honors, of course, is the team that won earlier today, and it is Gen G versus FPX. Wow. Okay, that's a pretty spicy matchup right off the bat. What'd you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for all these matches. We got some good teams. 
Um, so let's go to the 0 and 1. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I just absolutely love the energy from the crowd here, of course. This is where the other CN team is currently hiding. Uh, DRG, of course. You want to see DRG? Do you want to see them with them? Let me tell you. Do you want to see them with them? DRG, Okay, I think the crowd, I mean, there was a lot of Aspas fans in here. So I feel like everybody, <laughs> you can hear them. <laughs> Let's see, are we gonna give them what they want? Oh! <laughs> okay, we're gonna be Le versus T1. Uh, of course, it, the exact same system as we done over the uh, uh, upper as well. We have two more teams left. Let's see who we're gonna get here. Oh, I'm excited for this one. It is gonna be DRG. It is gonna be DRG. And once again, uh, let's do the honors here, I guess. <laughs> uh, oh, I, f I, I do like how we've managed to get every region. Of course, foot is gonna be last. Uh, we're not gonna have any inter-regional ones right off the bat, but of course, we gotta say, um, some of these lower bracket games are gonna start to get scary because elimination is on the line. Yeah, I'm super excited for the next two days of competition. Um, these matches aren't in order yet. The schedule will be released later. But um, these two matches will be tomorrow on day three. Day four, we'll have our 0-1 matches. And yeah, super excited. Oh, I'm very excited as well. Mingtian, we will see G2 Team Heretics, and FPX Gen G. So thank you for joining us this Thank you so Thank you so much, Victoria. I can't wait to see for the games tomorrow. All right, so we now know how the chips fall on this one. Exciting matches. Also, I want to give a massive shout out to the Shanghai crowd. Just popping off and just loving the draw show. That is just great. And I know what they wanted. They wanted to see potentially, want to see some FPX shenanigans up in there, uh, which they did manage to get, but I think they wanted FPX uh, G2. At least that was the, the, the vibe that I got from the mm. crowd. Uh, but instead, we ended up getting G2 Team Heretics FPX versus Gen G. Now, remember, it's important to note, schedule will be TBD, so make sure you stay glued to the Valorant socials for all that good stuff. And then on day four, we'll have Lev T1 and then DRG and Foot. I just think it's um, uh, funny that each um, from every region, one of the teams has lost and the other one uh, has won. So it's very good that they, we still, you know, in the in that crisscross. I like that. Yeah. Also, both of these kind of O and uh, one and O games, I think, are going to be incredible yes. to watch. Uh, I think we we got lucky with the draws here. Yeah. All right. So, what, what does uh, what what teams have impressed you guys so far? G2 heretics. I just, I'm just thinking about them G2 still hair. talking about um, it. No, no, hear me out. G2. I'm, yeah. I'm actually going to go for, for G2 because I think like, heretics is too easy. But um, yeah, because even though they lost 13-1, they were able to recover mentally from that and just Very just true. because of that you know and also bringing it back on the on the last map yeah also that, that 9-3 comeback yeah. as well i think leaf showing some some great Amen. stuff g2 is a team with a lot of potential fpx is the, is the other team that that impressed yeah. me I, I know i like predated them and i was i was a big fpx head but but I didn't know if they would actually pull it off still, right? Yeah. Like th this team has come to international events, has been a little promising and hasn't pulled it off before. They showed some great tenacity in that matchup. They really committed to their ideas. And I think our, our squad with some potential clearly here, the, the, the Chinese scene continues yeah. to level yeah. up. And what a time to hit that peak in Shanghai when you have a Masters event at home. Yeah, the one that, I, I, well, I maybe could be a little recency bias, but honestly, Team Heretics, has impressed me like Woot. I'm a Woot guy, okay? All day, every day. You've been missing out. I'm a Wooter. You've you know? been missing out. Yeah, He's I so had, truly have, man. I'm on board. I, I'm on the Woot train. Uh, you know, next stop, we're going to the finals, baby. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> no, but seriously, these matches. You want to look... change your hot take? Uh, what, this you know? will be the moment. I mean, you know. You either do it now or you don't do it. Heretics in the finals? Oh, yeah. I, I have. I... He's not going to do it. Heretics top four. Can I get Heretics yes, top four? Yes, you can. We, okay. We, we changed that for the changed that hot take. Yeah, there you go. I like that. Um, oh, man. Well, the, overall, I got to say, great matches. Good way to start off the Swiss stages. Uh, and, and then, of course, we have the 0-1 games as well. Uh, I really do want to know. And remember, that will be played on the fourth day. So keep your eyes out. Uh, keep your eyes glued on the Valorant Social for that once again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, exciting matches. It's going to be tough for those 0-1 teams. There's a it lot is. of talent down there, especially, I think, with, 
with Lev losing today and that team being down in there, they're going to be dangerous. But even if you win your 0-1 game, you're playing the very next day in the 1-1. One one. So it's a tough road to qualification for the playoffs for those teams that have already lost in Swift. Yeah, yeah. but especially uh, knowing how playoffs uh, went in every single region, how exhausting it is. But think about a team like T1, right? They lost to, to G2. Now they have the chance of losing potentially to, to Leviathan. They're not going to like America's after this tournament, guys. <laughs> no. Sorry. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be the first <laughs> time everyone's just hating on America's region, you know? Unreal. No, but seriously, I, what, what a great way to start things off. We thank you guys so much for joining us. The action, of course, continues tomorrow. Same time, same place right here. We thank you so much for joining us. And we will have our 1-0 and o teams playing tomorrow. So we'll see you then, folks. Take care. Heavyweight matchups, a few names come to the mind. Names like Aspas, names like Texture, Gen G, Leviathan, it's about to go down. On this defense, they're absolutely nasty. Dizzy Blind will come through, but it doesn't matter as Aspas mows down another. Meteor, the last one standing, and Aspas will claim it as well. Flash is now starting to come through, and they are just met with an immense amount of death. A blink and you miss it round. But already, damage dealt, further bound, text, guns down to 13 to 7. Lev making a statement here on Icebox. Cherub doing wonders, but Aspas, 1 2, tap text with a finisher. They'll clean him up. Ah, this guy, let's go. The 2v3 is left, but he's trying to convert the bonus. Texture inching forward, able to find one. Sends up the sand, soul, looks for the third, and he's got it. Texture maybe seemingly coming alive. Clear out on the turret, entry around into the back. Karen's gonna be struck down. Texture able to find one. Looks for a second. Finds it. Push coming Ooh. through. The covering fire from Munchkin is absolutely gorgeous. 13 to 5. Gen G bouncing back after that ice box. They take us the distance. They take us to breeze. We're gonna be stuck. Does so much tax! One, two punch! Knocks him out! Munchkin playing forward. Finds off spots. Lakia finds calm. Mazzino swings out, Meteor says no, and it's now all on Ospas. He's been doing everything that he can, but Meteor will not give him the time of day. Gen G, they're darn good at being scrappy too, and a shot from Texture! Gen G will win the series 13 to 7. An unlikely contest between two teams here that I don't think anyone had on the bingo cards meeting at an international event, but here it is. You got DRG on one side, the third seeded team looking to shock everyone with a potential win here. And then for Team Heretics, it's about getting their system in place and getting Woot activated. But he's able to survive. Fortunately, wow, for him, Benji Fishy with three. But Bukashu has an answer back. He's able to get both. Bukashu certainly not trying to conceal it. And he snaps on the boo. He's so good. He's so good, Doug. Heretics have outclassed the RG every step of the way. That'll be the first map for Team Heretics. Yeah, but they've got a brutal crossfire. He has to get All the, the one as best as he can, and he's going to get it. Can he pull it off this time? Yes, he can. And that Cypher is going to get so much info. They've got to overwhelm, and they've managed to do so. Nick, again, an opportunity to be hero, but Wu drops him. Let's go, baby. Good. But this time, the Paranoid did not connect. However, Benji, Fishy, and Wu still do. This kid. Oh, this oh kid. my goodness. They just make it look so easy. Let's go. Heretics from beginning to end, from A to Z, dismantle and destroy DRG.